horse man was born in the great state of Massachusetts in a- No, no, we aren't doing that. Horse man deserves more than some bland presentation for how important he is. Hmm? I'm sorry? You don't know who Horse Man is? Never heard of him? Well, that is a tragedy, isn't it? Because Horse Man is one of the most important early Americans who defined your life and mine. George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, Henry Ford, all tremble before the overwhelming influence of Horace Man. We've all felt the long arm of Horace Man hover over us, whether we knew it or not. So just what is it that he did? Well, we actually do have to go over some of the dull background stuff here to get a better idea of how Horace arrives at his big idea. So like I said, Horace Mann was born in Massachusetts a little after the founding of America as an independent nation. He and his parents were poor, and Mann had little to no formal education. You see, back in those days, parents had to pay for their children to attend school. So if you were poor, you were kind of out of luck. But Horace was born in Franklin, Massachusetts, and had one thing going for him other poor boys did not the first public library in the United States, which was donated by Benjamin Franklin himself. Horace studied voraciously, enough that he was admitted into Brown University, where he graduated with high honors. So Horace went on to study law, become a lawyer, did some lawyering, then got elected to the Massachusetts House of Representatives, and then later, the state senate. Now you're probably thinking at this point, lawyer? Politician? I thought we were supposed to be talking about pioneers of education. What are you playing in here, Christian? I want my money back. Well, hold on there, buckaroo, because this is where all the strings start to come back together. You see, when Horace was part of the state senate, he passed an important 1837 bill, which established the Massachusetts Board of Education, and left all of his other work responsibilities behind to go work there reforming his state's education system. See, the Massachusetts education system at the time was real wreck. Just a burning garbage pile, if I'm going to be honest. It was during this decade, as a secretary of the Board of Education, Horace Mann became the person you need to know. Horace Mann published the Common School Journal, in which he laid out his beliefs. The main reform that you should know about, the one that changed everything, is that Horace Mann believed that a community should be responsible for the education of its children. What? That's it? No, see, you're missing the big picture of what Horace was saying here. And real fast, he was saying a lot of stuff in this journal, like that teachers should teach more and be better educated, and that people need to be educated to be good citizens, and that schools should be secular, and just a, a lot, okay? But let's focus on the big picture. Communities should be responsible for the education of its children. I know it's a little hard to wrap your head around since you grew up in this system, but remember, your parents had to pay for you to get an education. And if you were poor, good luck, bud. Have fun being uneducated. Or hope that you live where the first library is. But man didn't want that to happen anymore. Man thought that if everyone in the community chipped in a little, all of the kids would be able to go to school and get educated, and our country would be better off for it. And it's one of the ideas that when you say it out loud, it just makes sense. And this should be part of the basis of all teachers today. Everyone, regardless of where you come from, or how much you have, or what you believe in, has a right to education. And that's what Horace Mann created the opportunity for. So if you ever find yourself in a classroom with a bunch of students complaining that they don't know why they have to be there, you tell them they can thank Horace Mann.